In today's video I'm showing you how to make this pretty Dutch spring card. It has a beautiful layered 3D look that I've made using dice. Hey hey, welcome back to Garen's Papercraft. Thank you very much for watching. The designer series paper in good taste has one of these sheets which I suppose has a look of Dutch Delftware tiles and I thought to combine it with the beautiful tulips to make this Dutch spring card. Now if you um, take your designer series paper and if you cut a four inch strip that is just going to fit on the die because the dies that I've used are two dies. I've used the large, the largest of the, um, I'll show you, the largest of the stitched rectangles. <laughs> I was thinking about the name there for a minute. And so this is the, the second large. So I've taken the largest one and then from another die set, picture this, there's one with rounds but there's one with these rectangles as well and you see I have stuck them together with some tape temporarily. So I'm using this to die cut the paper and to die cut in uh, misty moonlight as well. So your base card is misty moonlight. This is eight and a quarter by five and a half and you score this at four and one eighth which is just going to be the right fit for this die cut. You're also going to need a piece of Misty Moonlight in the same size, four inches would do, but a bit larger is okay. And then your designer series paper, four inches by, well, it's it's six, but you could take five and a half. And it's a tight fit, as I said, when you die cut it, it'll just fit. And if you use four inches, you'll be able to get more out of your designer series paper. So I'm going to cut this, and when I've done that, I'll be back. As you can see, it just fits the paper, but it's large enough. Now then, I've already die cut it once in Misty Moonlight. Now these two you're going to keep and you discard that one. And with this one, it's the other way around. You're going to keep that one and you can discard these two. And you can remove it from the die carefully. And if you intend to make more cards, as I am, I'm keeping them together for the time being. Now then, just to check if I have, because there may be a slight difference in the cutting, so I'll just check from the top, and this is the way that I cut it, so here I've put a cross to indicate it's the top, and I'm going to do the same thing there, that when I mix up things on my table, I don't end up with sticking them together in the wrong way. So then these I'm going to put over here and first of all I'm going to attach this one on top of that one. Then you want your layering piece to go on top of the base card and to do that I'm using the adhesive strips. Oops. Oh dear, I forgot something. I forgot to attach a bit, a bit of ribbon there. No problem, as long as I use my silicone craft sheet I can leave it over there. Silly of me, I just forgot about it. First I have to colour my strip of designer, or my strip of designer, nothing, my um, 
ribbon. This is the black and white ribbon, but I'm colouring it with Misty Moonlight Stampin' Blend, the light one, just to give this a dark blue delft look. And then I can attach it to my... I suppose I could use my strips for that, couldn't I? Um, on my other card I used the glue dots. I may still use a glue dot, I'm not sure. Just see if it's on straight here. So I'm folding it around. Well, I suppose it sticks, doesn't it? And it doesn't show from this end. No, this is okay. So now I can put it on my base card. Sorry for that interlude. <laughs> These things happen when you're crafting. And now from the top, maybe my head is in camera, I don't know. But I want to take a good look from the top whether I'm putting it on straight or not. And then I can push down. Okay, that's what I wanted. Now then, I'm going to put this piece back in. And I want to put it back in the way it was cut. So that's the way, okay. Just push it in and then from the top look if all the edges match up and because of the glue you can still move it around a bit. So that is one part of the card finished. Now for the tulips, that's these two. And I'm going to, as you can see here, I'm going to stick the tulips on. I have already made one tulip and I'll put a link in the video to um, more information on the tulips, about the dyes and how you could cut several kinds of tulips. Here's the ones that I've pre-cut. This is Pear Pizzazz cardstock and I've stamped in Pear Pizzazz as well. Basic white and I'm going to sponge my tulip in Daffodil Delight. This one is Flirty Flamingo. So along the edges, particularly along the top here and then part of the bottom and the inside the top because that may, may show and the bottom on the inside as well and then you can fold it over and ink some more and here too and there you go and of course the inside leaf needs some along the top and the bottom because those ends peek out when you fold the tulip together Right, then I'm going to adhere, first of all, the stem using a stamping dimensional. And there we go, that's what I wanted. Then you can remove the backing paper, stick your leaf on. And I'm using mini glue dots to stick the other halves on. Mm. This I folded into a half moon shape. Put it in and I fold over the left leaf first and then the leaf on the right. And then you have the two tulips. Now then, I'm going to attach these tulips to these um, two um, pieces. And I'm doing just a tulip. And on the right hand side, the small leaf first. And then here on the left, the tulip. And again, the smaller leaf, but then on the left hand side. So as you can see that I can put the larger leaf on top, on the inside of both. So I'm going to do that. When I've done that, I'll be back. So I've adhered both tulips and now I'm first I'm going to cut away this bit that sticks out. And then I'm going to insert them into the card the same way that I did the middle piece. So you take your multi-purpose liquid glue and you slide it in and then slide it around and looking from the top that you have all the edges you can see the stitched lines of the tulips 
and now you can stick on these leaves. One leaf goes that way and the other one goes that way. And I'm using a combination of multi-purpose liquid glue and a glue dot. See? Especially the bottom part you have to make sure it sticks. I mean the glue dot will hold. And now then I make a little bow. Again, with this black and white king and ribbon, that was about uh, four inches. Now I'm using about ten inches to be able to tie a bow comfortably. And again, you have to colour it. Well, you don't have to. You can if you want to. And as you can see, I use a piece of plastic for that because otherwise I'll just be colouring my grid paper. And now at least all the ink that I'm using goes into the ribbon. So two loops and you push the one loop through beautiful little bow shorten those two ends and I use my lighter to make sure the ends don't fray anymore just touch them very briefly because you don't want to burn your ribbon you just want to singe it, don't you? And again, a mini glue dot. And there you have a beautiful spring card finished. Now, I didn't put a sentiment on this card on purpose, because then I can use it for many more occasions than just a birthday or a get well card. Now, if you liked my projects, and if you like my other projects, please give me a like. Um, likes do really help me grow my channel and I'm looking for my there they are because in this card I did use the enamel dots and now when I see my other card hmm they add something but you don't have to use them do you but I'm not using them for, for the other card then well and if you have any questions or any comments please leave them because I'd love to hear from you now there's some videos at the end that I'll link to to. One of them is the video on the tulips, how to make them and more information on the tulips. And the other one I'll just choose a video of which I think you may like it. Well, now I can say goodbye. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye bye!